everyone, my name's Kelly and welcome to my channel. I'm here today to film a video, despite seriously fluctuating light levels, so bear with me on that one, about a really exciting event that I went to this past Friday. It was Friday the 14th, which as it turns out is luckier than Friday the 13th, because I was fortunate enough to go to the Penguin Random House job hack event in Glasgow, which is basically a careers day, and it's Sunday now and I'm still buzzing from it, so I thought that I would film this video for all the people who weren't fortunate enough to attend that event. However, please be aware that the job hack does travel throughout the UK, so there's every chance that there'll be a similar event going to a city near you in the near future. I know that they're going to Taunton, I think I read that they're going to Yorkshire, although the application dates for those events may have already passed. But if you tweet PRH Careers UK, I'm sure they can fill you in, give you the skinny. And if you still can't attend any of those events, hopefully this video will give you a little bit of a taster of the day. You don't need to know anything about publishing to attend. You don't need to have even considered publishing as a career before to be considered to attend. It's a really all-inclusive, very welcoming day, and I thoroughly recommend it. I actually attended the event with four other girls from my MSc Publishing, hi guys, and then we were joined at the event by 25 more people, and in that 30 there was only one man, which tells you a little bit of something about how female dominated the industry is. This is the site that greeted us when we arrived, and you better believe that I was too busy pouncing on the swag you can see in this shot to have actually taken it myself. I actually pinched this one from Neil Morrison, who is the Director of Strategy, Culture and Innovation at Penguin Random House, so I hope he doesn't mind. As you can see, we all got a tote bag. I got the amateur adventure one, although I'm tempted to cross out amateur because if you watch my channel and if you know me, you know that I'm a pro. Uh, and these bags came in really handy later in the day, as you will see. <clears throat> uh, the unexpected star of the show were these Penguin Random House Smarties. They say job hack on some of them and they've got penguins on others. They're far too cool to open, let alone eat, so I'm just going to keep them as they are. Um, and wheel them out to impress people from time to time. Uh, and then there was some stationery, <clears throat> including this book, which I have my notes in, and now I won't know where my page is. <clears throat> there was the pen, which actually writes really well. I know that's mundane, but free biros don't usually write this smoothly, so I, I may have taken two of these. Um, and then there was the notebook. But it wasn't all about the swag, so let's move on. The day itself progressed really smoothly, it was very well planned, very well executed, and never boring. Even though there was quite a lot of information being conveyed, it wasn't given to you in one solid info dump. And this is because the program was divided into um, essentially a series of interactive workshops where the big group of 30 people was split into smaller groups of 5 or 6, and then those groups changed a little bit so you got to work with other people. And then those workshops were interspersed with presentations by different people from different um, departments within Penguin Random House, who did not go on for too long. The information they chose to convey was on point, it was relevant, and it was interesting. I'm sure there was much more they could have told us, but it would just have been overwhelming. So I think they told us what we needed to know and what we wanted to know. The workshops themselves, were fun and actually quite in-depth, I thought. I think they actually gave a genuine taster of life in those professional roles. For example, for the marketing experience, we were given a product, which I won't reveal in case you get the same one on your job hack day, uh, and we had to say how we were going to market it, who we were going to market it to. There was a really fun one uh, acting as a commissioning editor, which has kind of put that role on my radar now, where we had to choose a product to bring to the market and then say how and why we were going to do that. My team actually won a prize for that workshop. Um, and the prize was, actually we'll go with this one first, these two book proofs, they haven't been published yet, and this one in particular is so on my radar. It is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is set in Russia. I just hauled The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the Russian theme. It's set in a village on the edge of the Russian wilderness where a quite wild young woman called Vatya, was it Vatya? 
Vasya, oh well, Vasya has to protect her family from these dark forces which are fantastical and real with the help of a necklace that was gifted by a mysterious stranger to her father. I didn't really do that much justice, but I think this sounds really good and even though it's a proof, it's a very readable proof, so I'll be excited to read that one. This one here is Final Girls by Riley Sager, which isn't quite so friendly on the inside, the script is tiny. And this is uh, being pitched at readers of Girl on the Train. It's Sorry about that, my camera cut out. Clearly I've been rambling, and I think the light is still changing. Final Girls is a story of three young women who survived a massacre ten years ago and have been rebuilding their lives separately ever since. Then one of the girls commits suicide and the other two are thrown together. And as I understand it, the influence of one of the girls is going to turn into something a little bit dark and toxic, which means that that survival number may yet dwindle. Um, crime thriller is not really my cup of tea. I haven't read any for about ten years, not since... Birdman and the Cutting Room by Mo Hader. No, Birdman and the Treatment by Mo Hader and the Cutting Room by Louise Walsh. They were really good. Maybe I should get back on the bandwagon. Goodness knows it's everywhere right now. Moving on, my favourite workshop was the one covering CVs because that was the one most immediately applicable to me as someone looking to get into the industry soon, I hope. Um, the format was we were given three fictional CVs and cover letters for three fictional candidates to consider for the role of editorial assistant. And then in our groups we had to discuss who we would give the job to, why, and why not for the other candidates. So it's kind of like learning what to do by looking at what not to do as much as what to do, if that makes sense. Uh, it was really useful to me. And then there was also a little bit of a slide presentation which had the following key points to consider when applying. One, make clear why you are the best person for the job. Two, do research and tailor your application. Three, tell them how you can add value. And four, ask someone else to read it before you send it. Obviously. Um, the emphasis really was on tailoring your application. Don't just copy and paste your cover letters. And if you're going to, at least make sure that you change the name of the organization you're applying to, which apparently they have had people applying to them, but then mentioning HarperCollins or something in the cover letter. So obviously that's a rookie mistake. And Honestly, I'm trying to race through the rest of this now. I need to wrap it up. So let me move on to some of the books that I managed to grab at the end of the day. So by the end of the day, our hosts had unboxed and arranged a very nice array of books on the back counter that we were allowed to take from freely. But I just chose the things that I was genuinely interesting, interested in, so I wasn't being unfair to people later in the queue. Uh, the first one I got, which I'll tell you about now since the lighting feels quite apocalyptic, is The End of the World Running Club by Adrian J. Walker. This is the story of a man who was separated from his family by a catastrophic asteroid strike and he then has to run hundreds of miles to get back to them, despite the fact, as I understand it, he's not a very fit and healthy man. I've seen this doing the rounds on Booktube, and it seems quite, seems quite original, really, so I'm looking forward to finding out a bit more about it. I'm not going to say too much about The Martian by Andy Weir, because I'm pretty sure I am the last to own this book. Uh, I have seen the film, and it's one of the rare cases where, having seen the film, I still want to read the book. Uh, the film was great, and I fully expect the book to be even better, so I shall finally read that one. Next, I have Control-Alt-Delete, How I Grew Up Online by Emma Gannon, who I've never heard of before. She was born in 1989, so literally grew up with the internet, um, and this is kind of a self-help survival book for people who have grown up and spent most of their lives online. It's quite a funny memoir, I believe. It's blurbed by Lena Dunham here. Um, and this, Emma Gannon has made a career out of social networking, so I always, I always like reading about people with sort of new careers. Like, like this is why I like uh, people making a career out of YouTube. That's a very young career, quite pioneering, I think. So that one goes there. Next is Step Up, Confidence, Success and Your Stellar Career in 10 Minutes a Day. Fenella Mayo Fine and Alice Ollins are the authors. This. It's like a business self-development book aimed at women, which I like. Um, so it's a work-life handbook 
with interviews and stories from successful business women and entrepreneurs, the likes of Bobby Brown, plus lots of practical advice and exercises to do. Um, and, and then there's a line here that says, now go find your career unicorn, which would probably sell me the book all by itself. I love unicorns. So that is that one also. And the last one, I am actually losing my voice. That's how long I've been talking is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. I've put off reading this one. It's a memoir of a neurosurgeon who was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer when he was 35. And he started writing this book, which addresses the question of what makes a life worth living. And he did die while working on this book. And I just, I, I have such a thing about reading posthumous books. I, because I know it'll make me sad because I feel like you get to know people more through their books than through interacting directly with them in conversation. So I'm going to be getting to know a man who isn't there anymore. And that makes me sad. But I also think that it's an important thing to do to keep them, to keep their legacy alive. So I'm going to read this one. I've heard lots of good things about it, and then maybe when I've read that I'll have the courage to read. I think it's Marina Keegan's The Opposite of Loneliness. She was the Yale graduate who died within five days of graduating, and she had such a promising career ahead of her. And um, th they published a collection of her essays and stories in a book called The Opposite of Loneliness, which I've been avoiding because I know it'll make me sad. <sighs> All right, I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to stop fighting the lighting now. Thank you very much to Penguin Random House for having me, us, over for tea um, and to teach us lots of good things, useful things, and just to inspire us to pursue our dreams in publishing, hopefully, for me at least, in publishing. Thank you guys, and I hope this was useful. Comment below if you have anything to say, and um, bye for now.